one of the uh, things that you mentioned in your speech was that uh, sooner or later they're going to have to uh, come out of college and uh, live with the reality of life and making a living and doing these types of things. There's enough kids in the millennial that have now come out of the colleges. How are they faring? What are they doing? I mean, they're faring poorly. They're, they're, they're shocked. I mean, they're, they're kids who are now suing their colleges. This is an actual lawsuit. Suing their colleges because they're saying, I was promised a job. I was promised an income after I come out of here. Right? The, the, the Occupy Wall Street movement was all disenchanted college kids who, who got out after that lesbian dance theory major and thought they were going to make six figures somewhere. And it turns out nobody pays to watch people theorize about lesbian dance. So, you know, the, so, the, this is, so they end up, you know, going and living in tents in, in Central Park and pooping on themselves. So it's, so it's you know, it's, life is a rough teacher. What the left has tried to do is extend kind of the period of adolescence indefinitely. Right, so now you're, now you're 26 and you're on your parents' health care. Okay, by age, 20, by age 26, I'd been married for a couple of years, and I was two years away from having a kid, and I, you know, and I, and I already had two degrees and four published books. You know, it turns, and by the way, that, I'm, I'm, that, that's actually, I'm not even a success story if you go back 50 years, right? 50 years by the age of 26, you were supposed to be fully ensconced in your job. You were supposed to have like three kids by that point. What we've done is prolonged adolescence indefinitely. And so what Obama's goal is, what the left's goal is, what Bernie Sanders, Hillary, they have the same goal. And the same goal is to extend college out. Right? College is not a place that's kind of a break from reality. College is the new reality. So we have to make all of human life like college. And this is what they think Europe is, which is why Europe's is collapse. It's, Europe is going to collapse. And it's being invaded by foreign forces, and they're going, the barbarians are at the gates. And Europe is going to fall apart, and it is falling apart. So we can play this game, but it's not going to end well. Uh, so, and the problem is that because the education is so poor, instead of reacting against their teachers at college who told them everything was going to be hunky-dory, instead, instead of having the kind of all quiet on the Western Front moment, you know, where the, where the former student goes back to his classroom after World War I, he's in the middle of World War I, he goes back and he yells at his professor and he says, you're telling all these kids the wrong thing, you're telling them that war is awesome. Instead of them going back and yelling at their professors, they say, no, it just shows my professor was right because society is unjust. Right? The lack of my $100,000 salary, that's because society is mean, and so we have to transform the society. And, the, and that's why young people, again, 40% back speech codes in American life. This is why I think the last poll was nearing or over 40% of young people are okay with socialism, like the actual socialism, because they don't know anything. They've been taught stupidity. And how they feel is all that matters. I mean, there's a, there's a video that's going around the internet getting all sorts of play about income inequality. Income inequality is the stupidest issue. Income inequality means nothing, right? I mean, I'm, I have a lot of income inequality with Bill Gates, but I'm doing pretty well, and I don't care that Bill Gates is doing really well. The only thing we should all care about is that there are poor people. We should figure out how poor people can do better, not how to make Bill Gates less rich. But, what, but th this video is going around and saying, here's a poll of what Americans think the wealth distribution should look like, and here is what the wealth distribution actually looks like. And I watched this video in bewilderment, and young people love it. And I'm, I, I watched this video in bewilderment and think, who told you that you get to tell the universe how wealth is distributed? Right? Who told you that you have a moral say as to how wealth is distributed? It's immoral. It's evil. It's wrong. You're going to have to steal people's labor from them. But people are not told this, and so they think that their own subjective vision of what reality should look like should govern what reality actually looks like, and it's only later, after 80 years of communist failure, that they realize, oh, that, and, and hundreds of millions of people dead, that they realize, oh, that was a bad idea. Banks are in the business of lending. When they take the money in, they don't just stick it in Al Gore's fake lockbox, they actually lend the money back out to people to actually create new businesses and new products. You had an investor, right? When you started TYT, you were given $4 million by Buddy Romer to start TYT. That's great. That's the way business should work, right? But that money had, it didn't come from a bunch of poor people buying hamburgers. It came from a very, very wealthy guy who gave you money to create a business a lot of people want to patronize. If you want better products and better services, you need more investment in the products and services. The basic name, trickle-down economics. The basic name trickle-down economics is not something that any conservative even proposed. It's a leftist revision of what economics actually is, because you're not giving me the money. 
It was my money in the first place, created through voluntary transactions that I had with others. I've not stolen money from either from anyone, neither have you. And the idea that money has to be forcibly taken from you and handed to somebody at the bottom end of the economic spectrum to somehow jog the economy, that may jog McDonald's, but is not going to jog all of the creation of the products and services that make all of our lives much better today than they were 30 years ago in terms of the stuff we have access to. Jenko, I'll let you respond to that briefly, and then we'll switch topic. Yeah. So I'll try to answer that as briefly as I can, and I'll go on to your questions. So uh, when, when, you, when you talk about, hey, the banks, are they're, they're not going to just keep the money. They're going to put it out and, and lend it to people, unless they decided to, to do their own investments, which is what they did because we repealed Glass-Steagall. So it's not as simple as, oh, I have money, so then I will now utilize it or I'll uh, lend it out. So that is way oversimplistic. Speaking of oversimplistic, to say that, oh, well, they'll go buy hamburgers with it, Come on. You were so the middle class is struggling right now. And we've turned this into a Walmart economy where people are getting $7.25. And that, that if you're getting around $10, I think that's about 15000 a year. So don't, like, that is serious pain and difficulties. So if you give those people money, it's not like, ah, oh, I just want to go get a hamburger. No, they, no, they desperately need that money. And they, yes, they will spend it all in, in, back into the economy. So that's an economic fact. And so... And, and Ben, for the 88th time, we have to find a balance where you have provided an incentive for people to save and invest, and you have provided an incentive for people uh, uh, to be able to put money back into the economy and to be able to live. And it's not, and taxes is not stealing from you. So you're right, I run a business. So in order for people, my employees, to get to my company, you know what they have to do? They have to drive on roads. Okay, so it's not stealing from me to build that road. That helps my business. They had to go to school. The, the fact that they went to public schools allows them to work for me. All these things are things that I benefit from. I didn't build that company by myself. Every single person that works there helped me to build that company. And that's what it means to work together. So, And so, to, to answer Steve's question finally, look, it, it, you know, what, what, what is this Congress going to do on, on tax reform? Uh, and Ben and I disagree on this, too, because we, we just talked about it a second ago. Um, and this is just political prognostication, but I, I, I think that the Republicans will definitely pass tax reform. And, I, and the reason I say that is because the Republican Party at this point is completely dependent on their donors. And by the way, don't get me wrong, the Democratic Party is also largely dependent on their donors. I think the Republicans are a tiny bit more corrupt. But uh, so I think that... I think, I think that uh, their donors are going to demand those tax cuts. And if I am right, and we'll all see this, you know, because it's something that's going to happen later, not something that has happened, they will do everything. They will move mountains to make sure that those rich donors and corporations will get their tax cuts. Okay. So this is... This is an interesting case where uh, I say to Chang's prognostication from his mouth to God's ears, and he says about mine from my mouth to God's yeah. ears, because I don't think they're going to pass anything, <laughs> uh, because I think that there's a high-level incompetence inside the Republican caucus, and, and it's pretty fractious. Um, but uh, I, I do want to go back to a couple of points, because you actually hit on some major thematic points. You talked about roads and the fact that we need roads in order to get to work. This is a point Elizabeth Warren made, and obviously a point that President Obama made at the time. I don't think anyone argues that we don't need roads to get to work. The problem is that when you're talking about roads as a percentage of the budget, we are talking about a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the federal budget and of the state budget and even of the local budget. So the idea that you're justifying massive tax rates on corporations in order to pay for roads is just intellectually dishonest. It's a tiny per The stuff that we agree on, that government should spend on, is a tiny percentage of spending, right? It's all the other stuff that we disagree on. As far as the idea that I'm somehow being, you know, uh, dismissive toward people who are buying hamburgers, I'm not. I'm saying the people who are poor need to buy hamburgers to feed their children. They don't have the money to invest in building an iPhone because when you're just trying to get by and you are living in a Walmart subsistence economy, you're using that money to buy the products and services you need to get by. That does not create new products and services that become cheaper over time through competition. You need somebody to make those investments. You, you said this about Glass-Steagall, for example. You said the banks, they might make their own investments. In what? In what? They're not investing in themselves. I mean, they have to take that money and then they have to use it to invest in something else. Places like Apple, places, some that fail and some that succeed. This idea that banks are somehow evils is just not the case unless you are talking about them working in Congress, here you and I agree, working in congruity with a Congress and with a legislature that is attempting to give them kickbacks. Both you and I agree on this. 
So, and finally, as far as the idea that Republicans pass tax cuts because they're beholden to their donors, okay, and Democrats pass tax increases because the unions give them hundreds of millions of dollars every year, and I don't see Democrats complain about this. Um, so, you got me there. The unions give money to the Democrats. Um, so, am I... Am Are you I angry gonna, about that? I mean, does it upset you as much as, you know, bankers giving money to Republicans? No, no. Co the corporations give way more than the unions. Uh, so... It depends on which corporations. That's, okay. that's not that's really okay. true. okay. Look it up. You can Google it. It's really easy. Um, so, do I object to taking out union money from politics? Hell no, I don't object. Take it all out. Take the union money out. Take the corporate uh, money out. Take all the big money out. They're supposed to represent us and not the donors, no matter who the donors are. So, in terms of the question that you asked, Glass-Steagall, well, aren't they investing in things? No. Uh, I have a literal answer for you. Oftentimes what they do is financial derivatives. In fact, that's the majority of what they do. And financial derivatives is simply gambling. That's what crashed the 2008 economy. And, and what is so damaging about the removal of Glass-Steagall is now they could do their financial derivative gambling with depositor money. Boy, isn't that nice. They take your money and they gamble with it. And if they lose, well, that's a sad day for you. But if they win, they keep the profits. You know what that is? That's privatizing the gains and socializing the losses. So it's not, it's not that the banks are evil. Of course they're not evil. It's just that they're driven to make more money. Of course, that is the whole point of maximizing profit. So if we say, hey, banks, you're allowed to go and buy politicians, although the Supreme Court would say, no, they're just talking to them. They just gave them billions of dollars. They're just having a conversation, right? Just because they gave them billions of dollars, they don't, do they want something in return? Of course they want something in return. And that's our money. So what they got, it, it, they, what they got was, Laws passed by politicians to remove Glass-Steagall, and yes, Clinton and Gingrich, yes, both parties are guilty on that, but now the Democrats want to put it back and the Republicans don't, and they, they took our depositor money and they gambled with it. And if you thought, they, if you gambled, you get to keep all the profits, and if you lost, it didn't affect you at all, you would probably gamble a lot of money too, and you would take a lot of risk until you crash the economy, and that's exactly what happened. Okay, so, so, uh, so ben, let me just add one piece to this question, you'll respond to it too. You've talked a lot about the corruption in politics, mm -hmm. and